Election 2013 from Market Square Shopping Centre. This is Geelong's 93.9 Bay FM. And welcome back to Market Square Shopping Centre. Mark Highland here and on the panel is our News Director, Bay FM News Director, Rob McLennan and from the Geelong Weekly Review, Elizabeth O'Neill. The uh, seat of Karangamite in the spotlight today. Uh, we have got Carayo, the forum from yesterday, ready to go up online and we'll have Karangamite on bayfm.com.au as well. Some interesting discussions so far. Uh, our Bay FM News Director, Rob McLennan. Yes, we have, and we had some interesting discussion, discussions yesterday. Uh, someone in the audience has, uh, has asked us to put this question. It's an interesting one. It comes off when Peter Reid, the uh, candidate for the Liberal Party in Carayo, uh, made a remark to uh, someone who heckled him from the audience uh, referring to mental health policy. It was a put down. It didn't go down terribly well with people who contacted our radio station this morning. Um, so what we want to do is... it's, it's Let's raise the issue, mental health policy. Um, I'd okay, like to hear so, from yeah, the two major parties, yeah, uh, sure. first of all, what, where you sit with mental health. Rob, first of all, that was unfortunate that that was said because um, I'm a very strong supporter of union members. I was a member of a union myself and there are many uh, union members that need to be looked after. In relation to mental health, I think this is perhaps one of the biggest scourges of our society. I know so many families are suffering. Depression has become such a big issue, particularly in rural and regional areas. Uh, people are really struggling and the Coalition is very proudly supportive of mental health um, you know, initiatives, particularly early intervention. And so one of the things that we've announced is uh, an extension of the Headspace um, scheme right across Australia. We'll extend Headspaces because they do such an important job for young people in intervening at a time when they need help. That age of 15 to 24 for young people is so important. So we recognise you know, early psychosis intervention and also looking after young people can really make a massive difference. But it's a very serious issue out there and, and we recognise how important it is. Darren? Oh, look, I, I heard about the comments that the Liberal uh, candidate for Corio made, Peter Reid, to be frank, I think he should have been disendorsed as a consequence of those comments, but I'll leave that uh, to the Liberal Party to make those assessments. Um, look, the Labor government has done a lot, uh, particularly in terms of the establishment of the Headspace program. Uh, the Headspace program, of course, is headed up by people like Pe uh, Professor Peter McGorry. Uh, and, you know, our attention and focus really has been on young adolescents. Um, that's when a lot of issues do emerge in the health, uh, mental health space. Uh, we'll certainly do everything we can to uh, continue to fund those important programs to make sure young people particularly uh, deal with any me mental health issues that they might have, make sure that there's the support programs in place. Uh, early intervention is very, very important for mental health issues. Uh, that's certainly what I pick up when I get around and talk to uh, uh, families um, who have uh, loved ones um, with uh, mental health challenges. It's a big issue. We've got a few candidates wanting to have a say. Andrew Black from the Nationals. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Just to add to uh, Sarah's comments, one thing we do know, as it's been mentioned about r mental health, is that those who live in rural and regional Australia are disproportionately affected by it, that it's worse outside the capital cities. We've particularly seen it in the farming sector, particularly in dairy in this part of the world, and it was great to have Beyond Blue in Warrnambool not long ago with uh, dairy farmers from all across this part of the world. And look, the mental health of dairy farmers has affected my uh, family directly and so it's an issue that's very dear to my heart. That's why the Nationals are campaigning uh, its National Party policy for there to be a Minister for Regional Health because unless there's someone at the Cabinet table who's out there plugging for country health initiatives and fighting for the mental health issues for country people, it's not going to get the attention it deserves. So that's why the Nats think it's so crucial we have a Minister for Regional Health. Warren Jackman from the Country Alliance. Yeah, look, genuine responses to a, a, a genuine issue, but uh, what we need to remember too, we need funding for these things, and uh, our party would support the major party who would get the budget back into somewhere near surplus so we can fund these great things. We can talk about it, but we need dollars to pay for them. Independent Buddy Rojek. I've been studying psychology since I was probably 21 because my best mate killed himself and I wanted to know why. In my opinion, the best psychologist is your friends and your family and know you inside out and back to front. A psychologist can't understand and peel the layers away. So, look, in my honest opinion, I think you need to talk to your friends. At the end of the day, uh, it's not that bad. Go and enjoy the sunset. Max out your credit cards and take a holiday. 
Thank you, buddy. Uh, Lloyd Davies from the Greens. I care, and obviously the Greens care a lot about mental health. Um, and we have to do something to increase the level of services provided because at the moment it's simply not enough. A really good example is the Geelong Project, which was a fantastic initiative that was helping young kids stay off the streets. There was, it had a 100% success rate and its funding's just been cut. So in one month's time, those kids will no longer have any support. We need to make sure we get the money for the initiatives that like that so we can keep kids and support them adequately. I might just um, change the topic here. Um, to, to Sarah, there's a question from the floor. What are the, what's the Liberal Party's stance on industrial relations, please? Our position on industrial relations is we want to return to the Fair Centre. I, I do need to correct Darren. Darren is running quite a misleading campaign talking about work choices and cutting penalty rates. Um, for people who are interested in facts, neither of those things will happen on a coalition. What we are interested in is ensuring that there is not, uh, not unlawfulness on building sites and that we can get on with the business of growing jobs. So, for instance, the CFMEU is blockading the regional rail link and that's been a, uh, an illegal blockade and that's uh, been very disappointing for this region. Um, but we just want to see a return to the sensible centre. Unions do a, a great job. There are many union members, I think, though, that have been very let down um, by their union bosses. And we just want a fair system for all, for workers and for employers. Darren, would you like to respond to that? Uh, absolutely, thank you. We, of course, all know that work choices is in the Liberal Party's DNA. We know uh, that Tony Abbott was one of the strongest advocates for, for work choices. Whenever you hear the Liberal Party talking about returning it to the sensible centre, what that actually is, is of course uh, code for saying that we are going to assault your terms and conditions. Uh, we are going to go after your penalty rates and overtime. Uh, we are going to diminish your job security in the workplace. That's what the Liberal Party stand for and that's what they mean when they say uh, we are going to return IR to the sensible centre. It's rubbish. The Liberal Party believe in work choices uh, and of course Tony Abbott was one of the strongest advocates for industrial relations reform, uh, denying workers the opportunity uh, when he was in the Cabinet in the Howard Government. That's what they stand for. We know that's what they stand for. Uh, Geelong people recognise that and they won't be taken for fools. Andrew Black from the Nationals. Yeah, just to, just to respond to uh, Darren's comments, it feels like I'm back in year 11, back in 2007. What we have is a rerun of the 2007 scare campaign that Labor ran. Um, when the Work Choices Repeal Act went through the Parliament, had bipartisan support from the Liberals and the Nationals, as well as the Australian Labor Party, we learned our lesson. Um, and I'll, just on the comment that Tony Abbott's a big supporter of Work Choices, it's quite well known that Tony Abbott was only one of two Cabinet members in the Howard Government Cabinet that actually opposed Work Choices. So it's not in Tony Abbott's DNA. The Coalition learned our lesson. The expression, dead, buried and cremated, uh, is the phrase that's being used. Work Choices is not coming back. And if this is Labor's if that's all they've got to fall back on is the 2007 election campaign six years ago, um, something badly wrong. Uh, Lloyd, Green, uh, Lloyd Davies from the Greens. The Greens want to create a more caring work environment. We want to see people caring about their future of their careers and being inspired by their jobs, while also giving people the rights to have flexible work hours for carers and such as when they become mother and a father. It's Bay FM's uh, 2013 Federal Election Forum from Market Square Shopping Centre. Karangamite is the seat under the spotlight today. Uh, we only have a few minutes to go, uh, five minutes or so, so we might take a few questions from the floor. Thanks, uh, yeah, Mark. Be I've been approached by a lot of people who have questions, so I'll get to what I can. I apologise to people I don't get to. Uh, we were talking about uh, mental health and uh, the political party's stance on mental health a little earlier, and I was approached by a young returned soldier who wants to know what you guys are going to do for those like him coming back from Afghanistan and Iraq and the fact that he asked the question would pose it not enough is being done. Buddy Rojek, independent, looks like he would like to have a say. Uh, these badges all support soldiers. My uncle is a senior administrator of the Vietnam Veterans Motorcycle Club and they deal with the men that the Department of Veteran Affairs don't want to deal with. Uh, for example, uh, one of the leads is called Agro. He's Agro because he got stuck down a Vietnamese foxhole and couldn't get out. Anyway, I'm setting up the Anzac United Party for the soldiers of this country to join so they've got a voice in this country. Thanks, buddy. Perhaps yeah, independent Adrian Whitehead. 
Yeah, I, I spent eight years in the Army Reserve. I was um, 2IC here at the infantry unit in Geelong. And I, um, we, I dealt with a number of soldiers who were severely affected by their service. One of my soldiers was a, Som a Somali veteran and we sent 30 guys over to Timor and two came back broken. So there's just not enough done for our return soldiers. People have to understand that what you put soldiers through is an incredibly horrific thing that they do on behalf of a nation or potentially that. And we need to have the support services in place to look after them when they come back. Thanks, Adrian. More questions from uh, Victoria Webb Taylor Definitely on the floor. Definitely more questions. Uh, again, an open one uh, to all the uh, candidates we have here today. And that is the situation with farmers. There are a lot in the Karangamite electorate concerned uh, the ineligibility for a pension. And lot, a lot of these guys are having to work basically uh, until they die. Perhaps Warren Jackman from the Country Alliance. Look, again, getting back to uh, the question, good question. We need funds in the bank at Canberra to help subsidise these types of things. We can have simple questions with simple responses, but the bottom line is we need to support a government who will get us back into uh, a good surplus so we can fund these things, whether it's farmers or mental health. We need the dollars, we need good budget uh, responsibility, and we need to get this country back on track with some dollars to back up our programs. Jaden Millard from the Sex Party. Yeah, uh, being the son of a farmer, I completely understand the, uh, the difficulties that they go through. Uh, the, the, the confusing bass statements, uh, the, the enormous tax bills. Uh, we hear money a lot being thrown around, increasing revenue. But the other parties just talk about taxing us, taxing business. There are two revenue streams that can be taxed, uh, that currently go untaxed, the church and the supply of cannabis. Uh, they both may, may seem like scary prospects, but the world is moving towards a more secular uh, environment in regards to the church and religious institutions, and the world is also moving towards regulating the supply of cannabis, which both together would reap at least $26 billion a year to be pumped back into uh, pensions, infrastructure, and uh, spending on uh, people of Australia. It's an interesting uh, suggestion that's been raised by the uh, Sex Party today and yesterday. And Sarah, I wanted to ask you about this because Tony Abbott's well known for his religious beliefs. He's a, he's a committed Catholic. Why, why don't we... Uh, why don't we tax the churches? I understand that there's a compassionate side to the church that, that deserves to be left alone, but what about the business side? The Catholic Church is a big business, isn't it? Look, I think in this country there are lots of committed Catholics and uh, we don't let uh, our religion get in the way of our public duty. So that's the decision that we've made, that, uh, that institutions like churches and other charities um, should not be taxed because if you look at the work of charities in particular, they're so important for our region and uh, if you look at the, um, how important a role they play and the churches do a play a very important role from a charitable point of view, um, we believe in giving them as much support as we can to help deliver the services particular for, for welfare, for homelessness and the many other things that they do do. It's the Bay FM Federal Election Forum for uh, Karangamite. We're in uh, Market Square. Apologies for not getting to all the candidates because I know you all have a say, but we have plenty of questions to get through. Victoria Webb-Taylor. Now, I have a lady next to me uh, who has a few questions, but I suppose most importantly to her is that uh, concern more and more jobs going offshore and that she's got a simple phone bill that she wants to get some answers to but keeps getting put through to Manila. Can't get answers. She's sick. Uh, has been in hospital, it's a $1,400 phone bill because she also can't get a landline to a house. Buddy Rojek, you would like to have a say on this, The Independent. Uh, after this, I will talk to her. I've got the corporate affairs uh, uh, manager of Telstra's phone number and I said uh, I would like to call him and deal with my constituents' problems. So I'll talk to you after this. Sarah Henderson. Um well, I would also say that um, I'd be delighted to assist you. I have dealt with Telstra over many years. It can be very frustrating dealing with bureaucracy. I'd be delighted to give you some assistance and see whether we can work our way through this problem. It's so frustrating when you are dealing with, with bureaucracy, not getting an answers, and uh, I'm actually, I have a passionate distaste for bureaucracy, and uh, if I'm elected, I will be working very hard on behalf of local people to uh, navigate the way through the bureaucracy and to get um, quick and effective outcomes. Nick Steele from the Australian Protectionist Party. Yes, look, uh, the issue is offshoring and it's quite straightforward. We're having our economy offshored because uh, of low tariffs. Uh, it's cheaper to do anything overseas, so that's where uh, our employers are going. Now, you'll notice the silence of the other parties on this crucial issue. Uh, it's something they can't afford to be silent on, and yet they are. Make up your own mind about their integrity. 
Thank you, Nick. More questions? Again, the issue of 457 visas is uh, coming up in the crowd here, so maybe start with uh, Sarah on this one. And what's your question, Victoria? The question is that there's concern that uh, the 457 visas are being uh, misused by business and these people are getting hired over local workers. Well, I, I would actually agree with that. I've spoken to a number of people who feel that there is some rorting of 457 visas and I put the blame fairly and squarely on federal labour. It's federal labour who is in charge. It's federal labour who's been not enforcing it. They've cut their enforcement budget. And if there's been abuses, it's been a failure of Kevin Rudd and federal labour and Darren Cheeseman locally to address this situation. It's all very well complaining about it in the last three or four days before an election, but the fact of the matter is that we are having jobs, local jobs, compromised because there has been some rorting, and frankly, Labor has a lot to be responsible for because they haven't addressed this, ser this seriously or soon enough. Member for Durangamite, like, Darren Cheeseman. Thank you. I just want to uh, respond to that. Uh, Federal Labor did recognise uh, that there were some abuses in the 457 visa category. Uh, that's why we put legislation through the Parliament uh, in the last week uh, of the parliamentary sitting year. The frank reality is that the Coalition voted against those reforms. Those reforms are critically important for making sure that Australians have the first opportunity for work, uh, not the last opportunity. The Coalition voted against that reform. That reform is, of course, critical. In terms of the question uh, of offshoring earlier, uh, I actually recognise the substantial challenges of offshoring, particularly in terms of not only the job aspect, but of course people's privacy uh, and the fact that our records are being sent overseas with uh, very little or no uh, privacy protections in place. Uh, I'm going to continue to fight hard for this uh, to make sure that we don't offshore unnecessarily, that we do give Australians the opportunity uh, to do the work uh, and importantly that our data is protected. Uh, it's an important issue and I'll continue to work particularly with the banking sector and the telecommunications sector and the insurance sector to make sure that they do the right thing by Australians uh, and employ Australians first. One last question before we finish as we come up to one o'clock news. Uh, it was announced a couple of weeks ago, the uh, Liberal funding for the Great Ocean Road. Darren, you weren't a fan of that. Can you explain why? Uh, well, certainly I think the potholes do need to be fixed. Of course, it is a state road, as people do recognise. It's not a part of our national highway network. But I certainly do not support the widening of the Great Ocean Road. I don't support uh, the work that the Liberal Party are proposing. I think it's reckless. What I actually want to see happen with the Great Ocean Road is that um, it's protected, particularly the world heritage aspects of the Great Ocean Road. People might recall I led a campaign to have the area nationally heritage listed a few years ago. I think as a community we ought to now uh, campaign hard to see it world heritage listed. It's a very special place. It was built by returned servicemen uh, at the conclusion of the First World War in recognition of the supreme sacrifice made uh, by people uh, overseas in the, in the muddy trenches of the Western Front and on the beaches of Gallipoli. It's a very special place and we ought to preserve it and protect it as it is for future generations, not widen it. One last 10 second statement from Sarah Henderson. Uh, look, what Darren has said is not true. We are going to upgrade it by resealing, repaving, fixing the drainage. We are concerned about jobs, tourism and the road safety for people living on the coast. And that's why we are so proud, Mark, of our commitment to upgrade the Great Ocean Road. It's very important for our regional economy and unfortunately Darren um, is just uh, continuing more of his misleading claims on this issue. Thank you to all our candidates for coming along today. It's been uh, Bay FM's 2013 Federal Election Forum from Market Square. To the uh, Federal Member for Karangamite, Darren Cheeseman, Lloyd Davies from the Greens, Adrian Whitehead, Independent, uh, Jaden Millard from the Sex Party, Warren Jackman from the Country Alliance, from the Nationals, Andrew Black, uh, from the Liberal Party, Sarah Henderson, Australian Protectionist Party, Nick Steele, and Independent, Buddy Rojek. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, good luck to all concerned on Saturday. Any electoral information you need, you can go to aec.gov.au. Bay FM News Director, Rob McLennan. Mark, you and I will be working Saturday night. We've drawn the short straws. Uh, we, uh, we'll bring you all the action of the uh, the Karangamite electorate and Karayo electorate and Laurel as well. And uh, from the Geelong Weekly Review, Elizabeth O'Neill, thank you for your uh, help on the panel today too. Thanks so much for having me in the past. And thank you to uh, Market Square for having us. This has been the uh, 2013 Federal Election Forum on Bay FM.